Welcome back, Metaglorians. Welcome back, Foundlings. Today, we're going to talk about blast injuries. But first, a little bit of history. My mother told me as a young Mandoa that the reason we wear this armor is so that we can't be killed easily and so that we all look alike, no matter what our difference is from our brother and sister clans. We are one people despite our differences. A little Mandalorian history. But today, we're going to talk about the first reason that we cherish our Beskar armor. This armor is going to protect you from space wizards, laser swords, burns, and even explosions. So that's right, Mandalorians. Blast injuries are the topic of today. So, Beskarogram. It basically means iron skinned. And wearing your armor is one of the six tenets. So if you are going to adhere to the Resonaire, then you know that very well. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Now, you've been trained on how to throw a thermal detonator, and you know that it can blow a two meter deep hole in pure permacite. So you know how much damage that a blast can actually do. The primary blast, or the Brassance wave, is going to cause a wookie load much of damage, especially to the gas-filled structures like your lungs, your upper GI tract, and your middle ear. This is why you need to keep your helmet on and your Beskar plates firmly fashioned. Taking off your helmet when a blast wave hits will open you up to pulmonary burial trauma. You can have a TM rupture, ear damage, globe or eye rupture, or even a traumatic brain injury. We call it a TBI. So don't be an apostate. Keep your helmet on. Oh, and uh, you know, protect your tubies. Yeah. Anyway, the chest plate's going to protect you from abdominal hemorrhaging and perforation, so never take your armor off. If the blast doesn't knock the scrag out of you, well, then you need to be ready to treat the secondary blast injuries caused by flying debris. That Brassant's wave that we talked about will send every piece of Sith spit flying around and can cause penetrating ballistic trauma. Again, that armor and that helmet are going to protect you from flying debris, so keep it on. If you're still upstanding after the first two shucking parts of the blast, then look at your tertiary injuries from being knocked down like a pile of bantha dung. So, if you take a full fall like a blob, and then you can fracture some extremity, you can end up banging your head on something, or surfaces and causing a TBI. The helmet can only protect you from so much, but blunt force trauma isn't one of them. So, be careful. Once you see a detonation, get low, okay? And if you get knocked down hard, you're going to need your head to survive. So be careful. Watch out. Get low when you see a detonation go off. Let that go over you. And just when you think you've made it through the first three waves of the blast, well, there's more. The quaternary blast injuries can be a drug also. This is called from structures collapsing on you, thermal burns, respiratory distress. There's a lot of injuries that can develop. So again, Mandoa and Foundlings, you may have to treat for first, second, and third degree burns. Any crush injuries from things falling, any respiratory issues, and again, with your helmet on, it's going to help filter out some of those impurities. So trust the environmental systems. Now, if you survive all four stages of the blast injuries, you need to assess for angina, which is hypo, low, or hyper, high tension. There can be some ticker issues following a blast. Now, if you're out there chasing bounty pucks, or if you're defending the homeworld against those dank, ferric imperials, you're going to have to deal with blast injuries. All right, so foundlings, listen, I need you to like and subscribe, and the Medichlorian is going to be back soon with more advice on how to survive the diverse dung heap that the galaxy is, right? Sometimes that dung heap is going to crash into the oscillating device, and you need to be prepared for that. Now, listen, we're going to head to the range, foundlings, and we're going to practice using some thermo devices. Are you ready? Let's go, foundlings. Okay, kid, here you go. You turn it on, you got three seconds. Throw it and duck. Ready? One, two, oh no! Like and subscribe.